What is the most underrated Nintendo Switch game? I have asked this question to other content creators and we are going to answer what we think are the most underrated Nintendo Switch games that we feel like not enough people played. That is the theme of the video. Throughout this video, the other YouTubers that I have invited will talk about their picks and I will end the video with some surprises and also my pick. I have gotten entries from Metal Jesus Rocks, Sander Scallion, Miss Bubbles, Food for Dogs, but I really want to start off this video by showing off a YouTube channel that I find kind of underrated in itself. <laughs> this is the entry from Some Kinda Gaming. So straight up, I just want to say that this is an absolute honor like can you believe that i'm in an urshi gaming video because i sure as hell can't it is literally a dream come true for me so thank you thank you so much for having me now i could easily fangirl for the next 30 minutes but i'm not going to bore you with that we're here to talk about some underrated gems so i i guess i better do that eh Honestly, I kind of struggle with this task a bit. There are so many indie darlings that deserve so much more time in the spotlight than they're given. But ultimately, I had to go with a game that many of you Urshi Gaming fans are aware of. A game that's actually sold over a million copies. The illustrious, the perfect, the divine Dragon Quest Builders 2. Now, just in case you aren't actually aware of the Dragon Quest Builders series, it's basically like Minecraft, but way better. Minecraft is fine, but personally, I need a little bit more direction in my games. I need a point, a reason to do things. And Dragon Quest Builders gives you Minecraft style mechanics, albeit them way better, but with a story and missions and side quests and all those things that we love about RPGs. And fair warning, this game is super addictive. I don't think I'm ever going to catch up on the sleep debt I accumulated while playing this. Constantly sleep deprived now. Builders is honestly one of my favorite games of all time. If you like RPGs, town builders, or creating mechanics, I promise you that there is endless hours of fun to be had here. Oh, it's just such a good game. I'm sure Irene will put a link to my channel in the description or something. So click on that if you're interested. But honestly, I am just super stoked to be here. You guys are the best. Thank you again. Much love. Now that channel that I invited, that is a channel full of Nintendo Switch content and Nintendo Switch reviews. I highly recommend that you check out Some Kind of Gaming. I've been watching their stuff for quite some time. Coming up is Food for Dogs' entry. Such a great JRPG channel. A lot of the games that I talk about on this channel, she also talks about on hers. Here is Britta's entry. Hi, I'm Food for Dogs and my pick is Battered Kytos, the 20-year-old GameCube JRPG remastered for the Switch. If you love games from that era, then Battered Kytos is worth a look, I think. The glory of Battered Kytos is its world-building and the combat system. The world of floating islands is powered by the essence in all things Magnus. This can be trapped in cards, which are used in combat, as well as all other transactions. So you see, this is a card battle concept quite different from the usual. In fact, almost everything is unusual in this game, and that's what I like about it. You can only earn money by taking photos during battles and selling them. And if you need a revival item, you have to make your own Magnus card via the SP combo system. Combat is unlike any card battle I've ever seen. There's a real-time action element, and no, it's not ATB. And that makes every battle unique and exciting. The story is standard, evil empire seeks superpower stuff, but don't let that put you off. It starts slow, but ramps up as you approach midpoint. 
I expected a traditional JRPG, a grand adventure with oodles of exploration, and Baton Kytos does fit that mould, but it is also so much more. It does have its flaws, who cares, but with a beautiful soundtrack and the enormous attention to detail and sheer creativity, it's a classic gem I'm hoping more gamers will discover and appreciate. I love Xenoblade Chronicles and this earlier work by Monolith and Tricrescendo has much to offer. Thank you Irene for the opportunity to present my case. Bye bye. And when it comes to food for dogs, I highly recommend that you watch that video called How I Got Into Gaming. That is such a story. Loving that video. So here is another entry that I wholeheartedly agree with. Again. <laughs> this entry is from Miss Bubbles. Hello, it's Miss Bubbles and I'm choosing a game that I feel is so underappreciated to the extent that I'm starting to worry it might not get a sequel. Dragon Quest Builders 2 is one of my favorite games on the Nintendo Switch and I've been on a mission to manifest a third entry for it so maybe you can help me out. This is such a quirky mix of light RPG elements with block building so it's as if Minecraft and Dragon Quest had a baby together. The story doesn't take itself too seriously whatsoever yet you find yourself getting attached to the characters that you meet along the journey. And the fun part is that some of them will be your companions. You're gonna need to help villagers, so you're gonna farm to help them make food, you're gonna gather materials to build and decorate their homes, and you're gonna fight some enemies as you protect your base and deal with some fun boss battles. The world is so massive and you can traverse it by foot, through gliding, and even swimming, and there's this constant sense of wonder every time you go to a new area because you never know what new items or recipes you're gonna discover when you're there. I feel like games in this genre where they mix a bit of light RPG elements with sandbox and some survival mechanics, they sometimes feel very aimless and repetitive, yet Dragon Quest Builders 2 never has a dull moment and it keeps you engaged at all times. This makes story progression fun and inviting. I really wish that more people would play it, I rarely see it on game lists and I know that Isha loves this game and you can play it with friends if you don't want to go on a solo mission. Thank you so much Isha for inviting me over and if you love RPGs and cozy games, make sure to stop by my channel. Now Miss Bubbles is another channel here on YouTube with a lot of Nintendo Switch and RPG content. Check out all of the YouTube channels in links down below, definitely. Now we have an entry from a good old friend of the channel. He was actually one of the first ones that I collabed with in this YouTube adventure of mine. Maybe like back in 2016. I don't know. I don't remember. It's a lifetime ago. My good old friend Sander Scullion. Hello everyone, Xander Scullion here. When I was asked to collaborate and talk about an underrated Nintendo Switch game, the game that popped in my head was Gato Roboto. Gato Roboto features Kiki, a lost kitten on an alien planet where her owner is trapped in a crashed spaceship. To rescue her owner and survive the hazards, Kiki discovers a mech suit perfectly fit for her. And the gameplay feels a lot like a Metroid title. You even have an arm cannon for combat and smooth movement mechanics. One aspect though is Kiki's ability to exit the suit and get into tight spaces and uncover secrets. However, Kiki is very vulnerable without the suit as she dies from a single hit. Additionally, players can switch between different suits, including a submarine suit, for underwater exploration and combat. Without a doubt, the Nintendo Switch is no stranger to the Metroidvania genre, and maybe in this case, Meow Droidvania. But Gato Roboto isn't trying to reinvent the wheel, but simply polish the rims for a smooth experience. Gameplay is very snappy, I feel like the difficulty is well balanced, really thought out boss fights, and who doesn't want to be a cat in a giant mech? One of the things I really like about the game too, I'll be honest, it's not a long game. It's like four hours long. I think this is the perfect weekend game, or maybe if you're playing in handheld, this is a great game to start playing on your lunch break or maybe on your way to work. Something that you can play for a short span of time and feel like you got a full gaming experience. Gato Roboto is the game you gotta play. Now, 
we have the legend himself, a channel that I've been looking up to ever since I started YouTube. He's like a walking library of all games, retro and new. This is a channel that I highly recommend if you haven't heard of it already, but I bet you have. Here is Metal Jesus Rox's entry. Oh man, so many great Switch games to choose from, but I'm gonna be a little selfish here and go with one of my all-time favorites, and that is Skyforce Reloaded. This is a sequel to another game called Skyforce, or you'll often see it as Skyforce Anniversary. Now don't let the visuals fool you here, because while it may look like your typical retro-inspired vertical shooter, it's actually more like an RPG. Each of these levels have different mission objectives, like trying to capture all of the falling stars when you blow up a ship, or trying to rescue all the humans that are down on the surface, or maybe you're trying to not be hit during the entire run. But when you start off, you're so weak, you can't really do any of those off the bat. However, as you play the game, you're gonna get more and more experience, even when you fail. And so it keeps you coming back time and time again. And as you can see, the graphics actually are really good here. They're full 3D and there's a lot going on. There's no slowdown, it runs beautifully. You know, typically when you play these kind of arcade shooters, you play them for 15 or 20 minutes and then you move on. But that is not the case here. Like I said, every time that you play this, you're getting a little bit better. You're unlocking more weapons, more abilities of your ship. It's so, so addictive. I have put dozens of hours into the Switch version of this. I think it is an absolute masterpiece. Dare I say even a hidden gem. And if you like these kind of games, oh, you gotta check it out. An absolute must subscribe channel, if you ask me. Now, when it comes to my game, what I would choose, I actually had a really hard time thinking about this because I wanna highlight all of the underrated games, like, I don't know. I've been talking a lot about Astral Chains in previous videos now, and um, all of you agree that is underrated. Also, I have mentioned Nino Kuni like a ton of times <laughs> as something I think everyone should play, and I feel like not enough people played, considering how good it is, I mean. But I wanna do something special special for this video and like highlight a game that I haven't highlighted before ever and I am kind of very much into it right now and it is called Bug Fables highly inspired by Paper Mario. But this is an indie game that is a Paper Mario clone. It's a game where you have these three party members, they are bugs, and you are going on an adventure just like you do in the good old RPG Paper Marios. You explore the world, you use their individual abilities in the field to find and discover secrets. There's even a tattle log, like a spy feature, where you can learn about all of the enemies in the world, just like Gombella in The Thousand Year Door. There are badges to collect and equip, and the writing is hilarious. I am enjoying my time so much in Bug Fables, and I feel like not enough people have talked about this. It was released four years ago, so maybe that adds to it uh, at the moment, that not enough people know about it now. It's often cheap also. I think it is a must-have. Such a love letter to good old Paper Mario RPGs. The bug theme, it has grown on me, basically. There's like different clans, like the bee clan and the ant clan, and it's a lot of like politics going on between these bug tribes, and it's a whole thing. This game is so underrated. <laughs> Watch some other reviews. It's such a big recommendation. Turn-based combat with action inputs, the whole shebang. Now here's a surprise at the end, like I promised you guys. I asked on Discord, and these are the Discord entries. So Shower Knights is saying, Sakuna of Rise and Ruin, my game of the year of 2020. Mix of genres, farming sim and platform combat with RPG elements. It was super fun and super cute. Also, Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition, hot take. I like it more than most Zelda games, and it deserves a lot of credit for how much content it has. Nice choices. Now Malice is saying, Prini presents NIS Collection 1, 2, and 3. Just fun re-releases of all strategy games with comical story. Story. Good. Now Shampoo Uber Service. Hello. You are saying, I think Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity wasn't played enough, or at least I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it. The combat system was surprisingly deep, the RPG elements were fun, it pays fan service to anyone who loved Breath of the Wild, every character had their time to shine. 
Very good. Uh, agree. Kristen is saying, if you want to throw in a PlayStation game, Kina Bridge of Spirits was amazing. And I never hear anyone talk about it. Very green grass game. Such a unique and touching story with that addictive mystery aspect. I have the game, uh, but I haven't finished it. Wemmel is saying Disney Illusion Island. This is such a good platformer, which has a lot of charm and very tight controls. We like our tight controls, okay? Theo is saying the Diofield Chronicle, a very well-made real-time turn-based hybrid strategy RPG. I have heard a lot of people talk about it, but um, I haven't played it. <laughs> Jindiko Cruz says Duck Game is my favorite game. Had it when it first came out on the Oya. Ras is saying both Fuga Melodies of Steel games. It's a tactic JRPG where you play as children finding an abandoned tank that a ghost resides in. The art style is fantastic and the gameplay systems are outside the norm of the genre. Sounds intriguing. Vip Prince is saying gotta shout out my boys at Platinum with Astral Chain. Still to this day, it's not talked enough about. I know, right? Ah, Valentine is also saying Astral Chain. A lot of love for Astral Chain right now. So good. I recently saw it on sale. Not sure if it is still on sale. Check the eShop. Cheaper Gaming is saying Shiren the Wanderer. Wanderer 5. Uh, seemed not many people played it, even though it has tons of content and great art style. Okay, Titania is saying, I would say Princess Maker 2 and 3, as they are the ancestors of many life sim typed games, like a niche thing in a niche. So if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have stuff like the Atelier series today. I didn't know that. David Timperley is saying, I have to say, life is strange games, especially true colors as people often mistake story games to be boring and long-winded. Yet this game has so much story, detail, lore, and your actions really do matter. Mr. Nickster is saying, I am going to say Master Detective Archives Rain Code. I agree on this one. I totally agree. It did not sell that great and I honestly do not know why. It is so fun investigating, gathering clues and trying to piece together. You know what? I read, I think, that this is coming to the PlayStation also, like a just much better looking version. Uh, it's no longer gonna be like a Switch exclusive game. It's gonna... It's gonna look pretty soon. <laughs> Spider is saying, for me it's Wildflowers. It's a great game that doesn't get nearly enough attention and triangle strategy. It's true that there is a lot of dialogue in triangle strategy, but it's a wonderful world that has an interesting story and choices to make. There's a lot of entries, okay? I added everyone in Discord and this happened. <laughs> Thank you guys for all of the great uh, responses. Now we have a few more. Diddy Flames is saying, I vote for WarioWare Move It. WarioWare is one of Nintendo's more underappreciated systems in my opinion. This game harkens back to the Wii's smooth moves where you take different poses with the Joy-Cons to play the games. And you, well, actually move it! <laughs> Good. Top T is saying CrossCode is amazing, and Paltrax is saying Digimon World Next Order. It's like Pokemon, but hardcore. Theo is again saying Metopia Remastered for the Switch, and Court is saying 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim, a very underrated game. The game is a visual novel turn-based tower defense RPG game. That's such a cool story. I've heard a lot about it, still haven't played it. Lastly, we have Frankie Link saying Starlink Battle for Atlas is one of the more underrated games on the platform. I've been thinking about that game recently. That is true, it's such a good game, actual good game. Uh, not enough people know about that one. Now, I didn't invite many people to this collab at all, so if you feel like I should have invited you specifically, there are coming up more collab videos, okay? I think this topic is especially interesting right now when we are nearing the Switch's end, because a lot of games are just buried right now in the Switch's library, and we need to like highlight the ones that you might have missed out on. <laughs> Leave a comment down below with which games you think not enough people played. Let's have that discussion down below. Thank you to everyone that took the time to join in. Also link to all of the YouTubers down below also. Check them out, subscribe to them. Thank you so much for watching today and I will see you later.